This is Dr. Mahesh Kalan Shetty, Associate Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Walchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. In this session, we will discuss about the analysis of indeterminate structure by moment distribution method. Specifically, we will focus on non-sway frames. The learning outcome of this session will be at the end of this session, the students will be able to analyze the non-sway frames using moment distribution method. Let us take an example. Uh, analyze the frame as shown in figure by moment distribution method and EI is constant for all the members. So in this figure, you can see uh, a member AB, BC, CD and CE and uh, we have uh, hinge supports at uh, D and E and fixed support at A. The loading UDL intensity is 45 kN per meter and the point load of 60 kN is present at B. Now let us discuss how the analysis is to be carried out for this uh, uh, non-sway frame. Now this is non-sway frame whereas you can see here the sway of the frame is been restricted by this support therefore it is called non-sway frame otherwise if you do not have any restrictions in the lateral direction, the frame will sway and in that case we need to go for a separate method of sway analysis that we will see in the further sessions. Now let us begin with the analysis. Uh, as usual, first of all we have to calculate the stiffness of the member and joints. So we have two interior joints here B and C uh, which have got the distribution factors. So therefore, the stiffness of B and C is to be calculated. So at joint B, uh, we know that two members are meeting BA and BC and uh, the stiffness of BA and uh, BC will be 4 EI by L because it is opposite and is fixed here for BA and for BC it is interior support uh, therefore it is uh, 4 EI by L and uh, therefore the stiffness of the joint B is uh, summation that is KBA plus KBC. Same uh, for joint C, we will calculate uh, CB will have 4 EI by L and CE uh, will have 3 EI by L. Now you can see here the opposite end is uh, hinge, uh, therefore CE will be 3 EI by L and also CD will be 3 EI by L. So CD is 3 EI by L, CE is 3 EI by L, whereas CB is 4 EI by L. So the three members are uh, actually meeting at joint C. Therefore, the summation of all these stiffnesses will give me a total stiffness of joint C that is summation. Then we will calculate the distribution factors. Uh, so the, for joint B, the distribution factor BA is uh, the stiffness of BA divided by stiffness of joint B which comes out to be 0 0.545. For BC, again it is uh, uh, actually by this method also we can uh, calculate as uh, already we discussed that the summation of all the distribution factor at any joint is always equal to 1. So we have only two members meeting at joint B and out of that one member has got 0 0.545 therefore the remaining uh, next member is naturally it is 1 minus 0 0.545 that is 0.455. Then joint C again uh, we have the three members CB uh, it is coming 0.330. CD it is coming 0.298 and uh, CE is coming 0.372 as per our usual notations uh, these are the distribution factors at joint C. Then the fixed end moments we need to calculate. So the member AB since we do not have any uh, load on this member it is 0. Now member BC we have the UDL so we know that it is WL square by 12. So left side it is uh, uh, minus since it is anticlockwise. So FEM BC is minus 135 and FEM CB is plus 135. And the member CE again we do not have any load here therefore this has got a uh, fixed end moment 0 and member CD also no load is there therefore the fixed end moment is 0. Let us take a pause and answer this question sway in the frames are produced due to unsymmetrical support conditions, unsymmetrical loading conditions, unsymmetrical geometrical conditions all of the above. Think over it, uh, get the answer and resume the video.
welcome back now this is the question asked sway in the frame are produced due to the correct answer is all of the above because due to symmetry of unsymmetry of all these either it may be a support conditions it may be a loading conditions it may be a geometrical conditions any one kind of unsymmetry will lead to sway in the frame therefore d is a correct answer let us uh, continue with the problem uh, now the most important thing is this uh, moment distribution table so already we determine the distribution factor of all the members and the fixed time moments also is calculated so this is to be arranged in this table so joints a b c d e the members will write here and the distribution factor uh, b, member b uh, we calculated as 0 0.545 and 0 0.455 and for C, we have three members and all the three distribution factors we calculated, which are written here. Then the fixed end moments, as we discussed, that only for BC member, the fixed end moment is present. Rest all, it is zero. So only BC and CB, the fixed end moments are present. After writing all these things, then we shall proceed with the distribution. So it is minus 135 is the unbalanced moment. Therefore, it is to be balanced here as per their distribution factor. Here also it is 135 unbalanced, so minus 135 we need to apply. Out of minus 135, 0.33 fraction is developed here, 0.298 fraction is transferred here and 0.372 fraction is transferred here. And then the carryover will take place, so carryover from B to A is possible as well as from B to C also is possible. So uh, you can see here the carryover is possible. So this carryover will take place. Now this carryover will disturb the joints again. And again we will go for the distribution because minus 22.3 is the unbalanced moment produced now. This is to be balanced. Therefore plus 22.3 is to be applied as per the distribution factors uh, we distribute it here. And here also minus 30.7 is to be applied. And as per the distribution factor it is to be distributed. In this way we will continue with number of iterations. And uh, once we get a very fractional value, we will stop. So after three, four iterations, it is observed that the process is over. Then they take a summation of all these members. So AB, BA, BC, CB, CD and C, all the summations, uh, we can take it here. These are the uh, final moments of the members. And uh, these we can represent here with the help of this free body diagram. Now uh, you can see here the vertical member, the members, uh, the moment is 44.5 here, then uh, 89.1, okay, then here 89.1. As per their sign, so if the moment is uh, positive there, we shall show the clockwise moment. If the moment is anticlockwise, we shall show it anticlockwise. Sorry, if the moment is negative, we shall show it anticlockwise. In this way, uh, as per our sign convention, these free body diagrams are shown here. Now there is no moment at D and E as you can see D is hinged and E also is hinged. Therefore there is no moment transferred here. So with the help of this free body diagram now we have to uh, draw the bending moment diagram. So the bending moment diagram before that uh, we will just look at this free body diagram. Accordingly we will uh, draw the bending moment diagram. Now you can see here now one sign convention we follow here. If the moments are producing the tension outside, we take it as negative. If the moments are producing tension inside, we take it as a positive moment. So here you can see at moment at A, the moment is creating tension inside. Therefore, it is a positive moment, 44.5. And here you can see this moment is creating a tension outside. Therefore, it is taken as negative, negative 89.1 here. You can see here same the case here so here this also is negative this also is negative so both are hogging so hogging moments are shown here and in between due to this udl we get a positive moment so the maximum positive moment we get 101 kilo newton meter and uh, here also for this member ce uh, the negative moment is produced here uh, this is hogging and here also the tension outside therefore it is minus and then it is 0. At D, the moment is 0. At E also, the moment is 0. In this way, we will construct the bending moment diagram.
these are the references which are used for this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much.